Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 10. Your balance is off. Um, you could be unconscious. You could be um, disoriented um, to tremors, to seizures, to um, basically everything, nausea, vomiting. These are the consequences of a new drug trend called wasping. That's when wasp killers mixed with other drugs like marijuana and meth. Valley News Team's Ronica Marshall looks into why the dangerous trend is spreading and what it can do to your body. They're almost like chemists themselves. They're trying to mix and match to try to find the next high. There's a new way to get high, but it will cost you. They don't know the long-term effects, but if you actually look at the science of it, it's something made to kill something. So long use of it, there's got to be some long-term effects. But those consequences don't matter to everyone. We don't think about tomorrow when we are using drugs and alcohol because we don't want to think. We want to numb out the pain. The drug trend called wasping is making its way through the country. That's when users mix wasp killer with other drugs to get a stronger high. Why would you want to ingest something that's going to kill you? You know, it's, it's made to kill. Why would you purposely ingest something like that? But drug counselors say users have their reasons. It has to do with trying to combat tolerance. When the drink starts to wear off, I mean, what do we normally turn to? Um, either drinking more or using more or mixing more than one to get a different or more desirable effect. And that's not the only reason why combining wasp killer with other drugs is spreading. For one, it's cheap. You can get a more intense high for less than $6. Wasp killer can also be found almost anywhere. Anyone can buy it and it won't get you in trouble with the law. Typically, most things you're looking at that they're lacing it with are everyday stuff off the shelf. So um, that's not illegal to possess. Now, first responders are hoping this fad fades before it's too late. There is no antidote. There is no treatment really for um, the insecticides. In Fargo, Veronica Marshall, Valley News Live. First responders say when they find patients who are overdosing with illegal drugs cut with other unknown chemicals, they don't have a lot of treatment options. The best thing they can do is to help the patient breathe and hope the patient's body breaks down the drugs and the chemicals. The wind showed up in full force today, but not the rain. So how about tomorrow? A better chance as we head into the weekend, Hutch? It certainly looks like we'll see some unsettled weather in the next 24 hours. And for some of us, we saw a little tonight. Northern Beltrami County seeing a thunder shower that's now pushing off into International Falls. By the way, the drought monitor updated and puts much of the Northern Valley now in moderate drought conditions, severe drought conditions in north central North Dakota. Hey, your hour by hour forecast for the overnight hours shows increasing clouds and a chance for spotty showers or rumbles of thunder, mainly in the Northern Valley into Northwest Minnesota to start our Friday. So it looks like those temperatures will definitely be uh, back to around seasonable, but by the morning, we're expecting those mid 60s. So nothing too cold, and some of you may need an umbrella on the way out the door in the morning. More on afternoon thunder and Friday coming up in a moment. Okay, thanks, Hutch. A local daycare owner is upset and says the state of North Dakota isn't giving her a fair chance to reopen her facility after three kids wandered off. Some of the parents of the children involved are speaking out as well, saying the owner is getting a bad rap. Valley News Team's Joseph Ojo tells how these people hope to come together to help revive the daycare, which they say prior to the incident had a clean record. This April, three kids from Curious Kids Daycare in North Fargo slipped out onto the busy 19th Avenue North before being helped back to the facility. This is the only thing that's on my record since 2005. She didn't expect that the state would not hear her appeal and make such a rash decision to shut her daycare down. I was shocked, actually. I didn't think it was going to come to that. It was, it was really disheartening and probably cried the first time I heard about it. They have forced four full-time and three part-time staff out of their jobs. They have forced 25 families to have to find care. I asked Raisler if the state could possibly be targeting her daycare, and she replied that while it is hard to know why they made their decision, she feels her daycare is being used as an example. Does one incident on an otherwise good record shut down a program now going forward? Raisler says the incident has surely made her and her staff more vigilant of all children, and even parents of the three kids who made their way onto the street did not put up a fight nor wanted to take their kids out of the daycare. But they had trust that we had made corrections that we would not let it happen again. And it became evident that the state really 
wanted to make an example of this daycare. Other parents are standing behind Raisler and her daycare too. I mean, to be shut down, um, it's inconsistent with other daycares that have had kids get out. And they tell us it is very hard to find new daycares. They aren't willing to settle for what they're finding. Nowhere has a large outdoor space, and that's extremely important for me. And that they feel powerless because the closure is causing inconvenience. I'm a single mom. I have to, I get done with work at five. So I'm not able to pick them up until 530, maybe six. Now looking at close to 30,000 in legal fees just to get her appeal heard and not denied. Raisler and several parents are advocating for all daycares so that the state will not have a lot of power over a business with only one infraction. If there's another case like this, are we going to be shutting down every daycare that has a similar instance? That's a pretty slippery slope and soon nobody's going to have daycare. In Fargo, Joseph Ojo, Valley News Live. Raisler's next appeal hearing is in October, and she's hoping to spark changes in the law by sharing her story. Domino's Pizza gave a $5,000 grant to the city of Grand Forks to help fill some of the town's potholes. During the week of September 17th, the city wants to dedicate all pothole repairs to Domino's. Grand Forks will be using this grant to purchase pothole repair materials. And the city says it's Domino's way to make its ride smoother for their pizza delivery customers. Credit to Domino's. We've been talking about them for two days now in, uh, in Grand Forks. And uh, it's, it's, you know, we're not going to say no to, to uh, a, an opportunity to, to add some income to our, to our streets budget. Domino's is issuing grants to a community in all 50 states. According to the website for the city of Fargo, a plan for grassroots vending, a medical cannabis grower and processor, is in the review process with plans to set up shop just east of Horace. Here's a map to give you a better idea. The building will be built in the area shaded in red, just west of I-29. City officials say the current plan estimates the building costs at $250,000. Grassroots Vending tells Valley News Live they chose the location because it gives them the space they need for their cultivation business. Grassroots Vending also says they will start with about 40 to 50 employees and they expect to have products out in the next six to nine months. It's been over four years since the death of Andrew Sadik, the NDSCS student who was found dead while working as an undercover drug informant. While no arrests have been made in the investigation, a trial date has been set for the lawsuit filed by his parents against government officials they believe are responsible. It was June of 2016 that John and Tammy Sadick sued the Richland County Sheriff's Department, a deputy, and the county. A five-day trial is now set for next July in Jamestown. In 2014, Andrew was found dead in the Red River with a bullet in his head and a backpack of rocks tied to his body. His parents are seeking unspecified money damages. The trial had been scheduled for this past April, but the Sadix attorney said it was delayed while he pursued more information. A former West Fargo Middle School teacher who pleaded guilty to sex crimes with students will be sentenced in November. Shannon Mosier will be sentenced on November 5th in Cass County District Court. Court documents revealed there are six victims total and that Mosier had sexual contact with two of them, one of those victims being 15 and, and the other 14 years old. Documents also say some of these incidents have been going on since May 2016. Mosier had been a teacher at Liberty Middle School since 2016. She resigned earlier this year. She's facing five years to life in prison. We're learning that President Donald Trump will be making his way back to Fargo next week after a stop in Billings, Montana. It's one of a number of visits around the country ahead of the 2018 general election in November. When he arrives in Fargo, that's on Friday, September 7th, he'll be at the Delta Marriott Hotel to support Kevin Kramer, who of course is challenging for North Dakota U.S. Senator Heidi Heitkamp's seat. No confirmation on if that event will be open to the public. Trump was in Fargo in June to hold a rally for Kramer at the Shields Arena. And be sure to stick with Valley News Live for all your coverage of the Commander-in-Chief's visit to Fargo. It sounds alarming. Banned drugs are being found in beef, poultry, and pork. Everything from antibiotics to antidepressants. Now, a new Consumer Reports investigation raises serious questions about how the drugs got there and why a federal agency is not doing more about it. Valley News Team's Lisa Badeau has our story. Food scientists at Consumer Reports analyzed government data from nearly 6,000 samples of meat collected over an 11-month period from 2015 to 2016. What was explosive is immediately seeing these drugs which were never approved for use in food animals because they're highly hazardous still showing up in the food supply. It was sort of stunning. 
Drugs like chloramphenicol, an antibiotic linked to potentially deadly anemia, and ketamine, a hallucinogenic party drug, and antidepressant, among others. All of them banned or severely restricted drugs, yet trace amounts have showed up in meat samples. And no one, including the USDA or FDA, seems to know exactly how they're getting into the meat supply. They should have found out why these things are showing up in dozens and dozens of samples of meat and poultry. It can't just be an accident. So why isn't the government doing more about it? The chief scientist for the USDA's Food Safety and Inspection Service tells Consumer Reports that essentially the data were what they called unconfirmed screening tests. So no further action from the USDA was required. Since it's unclear what, if any, health effects result from eating meat and poultry containing drug residues, Consumer Report says you don't have to eliminate it from your diet. But perhaps think about reducing the amount you eat or making different choices at the market. Lisa Badeau, Valley News Live. Consumer Report says organic and grass-fed meat might contain less drug residue or none at all since there are stricter regulations on those products, though there's not yet enough information to, make, for, make, to know for sure. NDSU football fans braved the win for the annual Bison Block Party at Shields All Sports. Those in attendance checked out the latest Bison swag as well as enjoying some food, games, and music. The team kicks off <clears throat> a new season this weekend against Cal Poly at the Fargo Dome. The game starts at 2.30 in the afternoon Saturday, and you can catch it on the KVLY KFYR Bison Football Network. And don't forget the pregame show that starts an hour earlier. One witness described the crash as horrible. Later on Valley News Live at 10, details on what led to this deadly accident on a New Mexico highway. Western North Dakota hot today. Temperatures about average here in the valley with a lot of wind. Your hour-by-hour -hour forecast includes a chance of rain. Details are next.